Hello, I'm First Zen, and welcome to my Beginner's Guide to Robocraft. In this video, I'll be going over the basic game mechanics to get you guys started. So what is Robocraft all about? Well, Robocraft has a building element where you can place blocks creatively to make creations. But instead of shaping the world like it would in a game such as Minecraft, you use your blocks to make the best fighting robot you can. Once you've built a bot, you can go into public matches where two teams of robots face off for dominance. Let's look at our robot here. When you first load into the game, this is what you're going to see. The developers provide you with a basic robot to get you started, and it has all four critical components attached. The first and most important component is the pilot seat. This is technically the only piece required to make a robot, but if you were to jump into a match with just a seat, exactly what you would expect to happen, happens which is nothing much at all. Anyway, you must have a pilot seat or your robot will not function, and you cannot enter any matches without it. The next component type is the chassis pieces, which are the various shaped blocks on the game. These are used to give your robot a shape, as well as to armor your robot against attack. After that, we have the weapon systems, which are various laser turrets used to damage and destroy your opponents. Pretty self-explanatory. Finally, we have the transportation blocks, which on this robot take the form of wheels. There are other types of transportation blocks, such as hover pads and jets for flying vehicles, but wheels are what you'll be dealing with at the start. You can use all these basic parts to create a robot. There are some more advanced parts that do other things, but we'll go over that later. Modifying your bot is very easy. To add a block, simply left click where you want to place it. If you want to remove a block, just right click it. Your CPU level limits the number of blocks you can add to your robot. It can be increased by joining public matches and increasing your level. Building a robot is pretty simple, but the number of things you can tweak and the different build types is very complex. I suggest just using the default robot to begin with until you get an idea of some of the possibilities. After you've taken a little bit of a look at your robot, press the tab button and let's jump into a practice match. Doing this will let you get a feel for the controls in a safe environment before jumping into the public matches. The controls are very simple. Standard WASD for movement, and mouse for looking around. Left click to shoot, right click for small zoom. Later, when you acquire a hovering robot, spacebar increases your height and shift decreases it. So now that you're in practice, drive around for a little bit, shoot some of the AI bots, and once you're comfortable, hit escape and self-destruct. Not to worry, nothing bad happens from self-destructing in practice. Now it's time for me to show you what happens when you join a public match with other players. Hit tab, just like you would to join a practice match, but instead, hit the public match next to it. You will load in along with your teammates at your base, and after a couple seconds, the match will begin. Your team's names, mini-map markers, and weapon effects show up as blue, and your enemies will show up in red. There are two ways in which a match can be won. The first is to destroy the entire enemy team. This is very difficult to do, and will only happen if you are on a very good team. The second way to win a match is to capture the enemy base. This is done by sitting on it until all four red bars at the top of the screen fill up. The more teammates that sit on the point, the faster the points are captured. Be careful though, once you're across the map, it's very hard to get back to your base in time to defend it. Once the match is over, you get a summary of what happened, along with some robot points and tech tokens. You get bonus robot points for a variety of tasks, such as destroying enemy CPU, meaning destroying blocks on their robots, defending the base, assisting with kills, and capturing base points. Pretty much anything you do to help out your team during the match adds to this bonus. Tech tokens, on the other hand, are handed out for only a couple of things. You get 5 tech tokens for winning a match, 1 for each enemy you kill, 1 for each enemy you spot before anyone else on your team does, and 1 for each point you capture. Okay, now let's take some time to look at the menus. First is the inventory menu. The inventory menu houses all the blocks and robot parts that are available to you to use on your robot. The number in the corner of each part tells you how many of that part you have. Next is the Cube Depot, which is the robot part store, where you can buy new parts that will go into your inventory. 
You can buy these with robot points, which are the in-game currency you get after each public match, or you can pay some real-world money and get the parts with Galaxy Cash. Not every part is immediately available in the depot though, as they need to be unlocked in the next menu we have, which is the tech tree. The tech tree is the place where you unlock new toys to play with, and where those elusive tech points come into play. Unfortunately, not all tech points are created equal. You will see to the side here that there are many levels of tech points. The first parts you acquire in the tree only require level 1 tech points, but later on, the parts need to be unlocked with tech points of increasingly higher levels. You can skip all of this and unlock any part if you use the premium galaxy cache to upgrade your tech points to uber tech points, which are these fancy black ones here. But if you don't want to spend real money, the way you get these higher level tech points is to play increasingly higher tier of public match. Here's how that works. Look at this bar down here. This represents your robot's current tier level. This level can be increased by adding more advanced parts to your robot. If you add enough advanced parts to your robot, you'll reach the next tier level, where you'll be matched with tougher opponents, get tech points that match your tier level, and thus be able to unlock further advanced tech in the tech tree. It may seem a little bit complicated at first, but once you get into it, you'll catch on. Anyway, let's finish off these menus. Next up is the garage. The garage area is where you can store your robots for later and switch to new ones. You get three garage slots by default and can buy extras for Galaxy Cash. You can also give your robot a name here, which will be visible in public matches. Just a quick tip, blocks can't be reused on other robots. If you want to use a part on another robot, you'll first have to remove it from the robot it was on before placing it on another one. The social menu is basically your friends list. There is a search bar which lets you find your friends. From this menu, you can also party up in platoons, which lets you join the same match as your friends. Unfortunately, Galaxy Cash makes its way into the social menu as well, since you need to have premium membership if you want to have a party larger than three. Joining the same match as your friends is pretty simple. Once you all join the same platoon, just jump into a public match like you normally would, and Robocraft takes care of the rest. The last menu is the Robo Shop, where those with money to burn can buy some pre-built robots. Each of these robots comes with all the parts on them, which usually includes some Galaxy Cash only cosmetic parts, as well as a couple days of premium membership, and a permanent increase to your CPU level. That's it for the menus, and that just about wraps up my beginner's guide to Robocraft. Hit that like button if this video was useful, and subscribe for more Robocraft guides, build tips, and challenge videos. Thanks for watching, I'm Furzen, and I'm out.